Today on Adventures in Faith with Jerry Savelle. God is going to take us from where we are to progressing and advancing. And promotion is another blessing that'll come along the way, praise God. As we progress, as we advance, then we're going to experience promotions. And because of that, our highest expectations will be fulfilled. Open your Bibles first of all this morning to Romans chapter 1 and go ahead and be thinking about 2 Corinthians chapter 3. That'll be the next verse we'll go to. And uh, there are two phrases that I want to point out in these verses. First of all, in Romans chapter 1. Beginning in verse 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, first to the Jews and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, the phrase I want you to see, and I want to emphasize this morning, is the phrase from faith to faith. Say that with me. From faith to faith. Now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, or, or uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And look at verse 18. But we all, with open face, beholding as it is in the glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. And the phrase I want you to notice there is from glory to glory. Say that with me. From glory to glory. Now say this, from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Say it again, from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Sounds like progression to me. Sounds like advancement. Amen. From faith to faith and from glory to glory. Now I want to read a couple other translations here. First of all, Romans chapter 1, verse 17, from the Passion Translation. This gospel unveils a continual revelation of God's perfect righteousness given to us when we believe, and it moves us from receiving life through faith to the power of living by faith. It, it moves us from receiving life through faith to the power of living by faith. So notice that's talking about progression and advancing. The Amplified says, leading to faith that arouses more faith. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, from the Message Translation, our lives become brighter and more beautiful as God enters our lives. Our lives become brighter and more beautiful as God enters our lives. Once again, we're talking about progression. The Passion Translation says, we are being transfigured into his very image as we move from one brighter level of glory to another. Progression. The New International Version says, ever increasing glory. And then the New Living Translation says, makes us more and more like him. So these verses are talking about, among some other things, but our theme is, progression and advancing. So it's obvious that God is interested in you and I progressing yes. and advancing. Yes. It's never his will that we remain as we are. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. How many of you have, have noticed and could testify that since you became a believer, whenever that was, for me it was 54 years ago, next month, 55 years ago, that you have advanced. I am not that same man. And I trust you're not that same man or you're not that same woman. I trust if you are a man, you're still a man. If you're a woman, you're still a woman, okay? But <laughs> you, should, you should have come a lot further since you received Christ 
whatever time that was or however long yes, ago sir. that was. Amen. How many of you in here can say uh, you received Christ longer than 55 years ago? Okay. There's a few people in here. Praise the Lord. Have you advanced? Oh, I can tell by the smile on your face. Amen. Are the others that lifted their hand, have you advanced? Yes. Let me ask you this. Has your faith grown? Yes. Are you capable of believing things now that looked impossible years ago? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Notice that's going from faith to faith. I like every once in a while going back, particularly every, uh, at the beginning of the year, every year. I like going back to my very first, when I was known as Jerry Savelle Evangelistic Association, before we became an international ministry, uh, I like going back to my very first board meeting and, and reading over uh, the financial statements and what it took for this ministry to operate for one year back then. Now, I worked with Brother Copeland, as most of you know, uh, from about 71 to 70 in to 73, and then launched out into this ministry. So my first uh, board meeting was at the end of 1974. How many years ago is that now? 49, 49. 49 years ago. Okay. So my very first board meeting for Jerry Savelle Evangelistic Association was 49 years ago. And if I told you what it took to operate for that whole year, I cannot operate for one day today what it took one year back then. So I'd say my faith has grown. I'd say that I've gone from faith to faith and from glory to glory, and I give God all the praise for it. Amen. Amen. It's not because I'm so smart. It's not because, you know, I'm so good. It's because he's so good. Yeah. But I am smart enough to do what he said. And the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So that's exactly what I did. I, I, I got in the word and I stayed in the word and I have remained in the word. I, you know, you would think after 54 years that you'd know everything there is to know about living by faith. That's not the way I feel about it, and you shouldn't feel that way about it either. It's just about time you think you know all there is to know, go open that book again, and you'll find out the Word of God is inexhaustible. Yes. Amen. 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 We are just scratching the surface. Yes. Amen. We got a whole lot of catching up to do in the next few years. Amen. Yes. Praise God. So it's a wonderful thing to know that we can go from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Now, the word glory, you remember a number of years ago, we did an in-depth study on the glory of God. Remember the, the word of the Lord back then, many years ago, was that uh, we would get up every day declaring, show me your glory. And so if you're going to say to the Lord, show me your glory, then you need to understand what the glory is. And we learn from the Bible that the glory of God is the manifested presence of God, the manifested goodness of God, and the manifested power of God. And notice here, Paul says that we go from glory to glory. I would say that you could imply that we are to go from one level of experiencing his presence, his power, and his goodness to another level of experiencing it. And when we reach that level, there's another level. When we reach that level, there's another level. Amen. There's always another level. Amen. For somebody to go around saying, I have arrived. <laughs> you haven't. You are arriving, but you haven't arrived. There's still much more to experience. Amen. I have not seen, ear hath not heard, neither has entered the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those that love him. Even though many of us have experienced a lot of things in our walk with the Lord up to this point, but I know because the word says so, there's much, much more. So Paul is telling us in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, we're talking about going from glory to glory. The more we focus on Christ and the more we put his word into our hearts, then the more the Holy Spirit transforms, transforms us into the image of Christ himself. We're becoming more and more like Christ. Amen. 
You know, I, 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 I heard my daughter say one time, Daddy, you're the most Christ-like man I know. That's, that's probably the greatest compliment my children have ever given me. Amen. To know that your children think you're the most Christ-like person they know. Well, I've got a long ways to being, you know, totally conformed to his image. But trust me, I'm a lot further along than I was when I first started. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So notice here, as we continue to focus on Christ and continue to put his word into our spirits, then we will go from one level of glory to another. And eventually we will be conformed into the image of Christ. In other words, we think like him. We talk like him. We act like him. We get the results he gets. Can you say amen? amen. So look at somebody and tell them, I'm going from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Now, the Apostle Paul says in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6, he said, uh, I am confident that he who began this good work in you will perfect it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Now, the message translation says this way, there has never been the slightest doubt in my mind that the God who started this great work in you would keep at it and bring it to a flourishing finish. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm headed for a flourishing finish. And then the Passion Translation says, I'm fully convinced that the one who began this gracious work in you will faithfully continue the process. He will faithfully continue the process. So, I believe the word that the Lord has given me for us and actually to the body of Christ, wherever he might send me, yeah. is certainly applicable for the time in which we live. God is going to take us from where we are to progressing and advancing. Amen. And promotion is another blessing that will come along the way, praise Amen. God. As we progress, as we advance, then we're going to experience promotions. And because of that, our highest expectations will be fulfilled. So I'm fully expecting, even though I've come a long ways since 54 years ago, but I'm, I'm fully expecting that 2024, I am going to experience so much progression, so much advancement, and so much promotion, you may not even recognize me by the by we reach the end of the year. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want to encourage all of you to set your faith toward that goal, progressing, advancing, and promotion and highest expectations being fulfilled. I, I don't sit around and, you know, in October and just try to think of something real cute. Oh, that sounds cute. I'll just tell them that's what the Lord said. No, I don't do that. I have a respected ministry. Uh, people respect it all over the world, and I'm not going to blow it right here at the end just making stuff up. Right. Amen. Yeah, amen. Now, I know it seems like there are more prophets than there are Christians in the land today. <laughs> amen. I've never heard so many prophetic words in all my life. Everybody's a prophet now. If you've been saved three weeks, you're a prophet now. You know. and, and, you know, some of those are self-appointed. And some of them you just have to ignore. You know, but it, it, particularly if it doesn't line up with a word. Amen? Amen. And I, I don't go around all over the world saying I'm a prophet. Even though Brother Copeland set me apart in one of the conventions recently, back a few years ago, and said... Jerry, it's time for you to accept the office of the prophet. Well, I don't go around calling myself a prophet all the time. If I am, I must be a minor one. Because <laughs> I don't have a prophetic word for everybody that comes in contact with me. And I'm telling you, some folks, dear Lord, they must sleep at the throne of God. They hear so many <laughs> words from God. While God's sleeping, they're awake running the universe in his behalf. 
you know. There's some people that I come in contact with every time they see me. I got a word for you. I got a word for you. Uh, I had a prophetic dream about you. Uh, I had a night vision about you. Why is God talking to everybody else about me and he don't tell me anything? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Am I that dense? I can't hear. Now, I believe I can hear God myself. Now, there are a few people that when they say, Jerry, the Lord said this to me and he wanted me to bring this to you or share this with you, that I, I receive it because I know, I know their position in God, position in Christ. Uh, Kenneth Hagin prophesied over me numerous, numerous times and I certainly welcomed it when he did. I have a picture in my archives where uh, he called Carolyn and I up in one of his meetings and, and laid hands on us and prophesied over us. Brother Copeland's done it numerous times. Brother Roberts has prophesied over me numerous times. First time I ever met the man. When he called me to his office, he was watching me on Kenneth Copeland's broadcast, preaching a message that the Lord had given me in a, in a divine appearance that I did not know was going to happen. I did not ask for it. Happened in Charlotte in 1981. Caught me off guard. I didn't know it was going to happen. And, and the Shekinah glory of God filled my hotel room to the point I couldn't even see the furniture anymore. And Jesus appeared and, and gave me a message and that message has gone around the world and, and people are still giving me testimonies of what that message has, has, has done in their lives. And uh, uh, when I got over to the meeting that night, Brother Copeland said he was supposed to close the service out. It was the last night of the meeting. He said, uh, Jerry, I'm not preaching tonight. The Lord visited you today to come tell us what he said. And so I, I brought that message and it was a prophetic word, even though I wasn't a prophet. But the Lord gave me that word because the body of Christ desperately needed it. And the word was, my people are in financial famine. And I'm going to give you the keys that will bring them out and hold you responsible for sharing it everywhere you go. And I preached it that night in that convention with over 10,000 people there. And it was one of the greatest uh, miracle services, financial miracle services that we'd ever experienced. And I took it to the world. I left there and I went to South Africa and took it to Ray McCauley's church, Rama uh, Bible Church in Joburg, South Africa. And, and it, it absolutely transformed the church of, with, with financial breakthroughs, praise God. Amen. Amen. And so I know I heard from God. Amen. And as I said, that was 1981. I'm still getting testimonies from it. Now, Brother Copeland received prophetic word every year. And the word that the Lord gave him was 2024, the year of more and more and more and more. Amen. That sounds like progression to me. Amen. That sounds like advancement to me. Yes. I mean, usually every year, uh, what the Lord says to Brother Copeland and what he says to me, even though it's not the same wording, but it's certainly related. Yes. It's saying the same thing, praise God. Amen. So I want to encourage you. Set your faith right now, if you haven't already, that this can be your year for advancement and progression and promotion. Now, remember, there were prerequisites. It's not going to just happen automatically. And what were they? Number one, stay in faith. Number two, remain focused on the promises of God. Number three, don't let anything that's happening in the world distract you. Amen. And if you will follow those instructions, then it's going to be a great year. Praise God. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? I encourage you to do this as well. Like Paul said in Philippians, uh, uh, looking past, uh, looking beyond the past. Amen. No matter how bad your past was, no matter what happened in 2023, good or bad, if it was good, continue to praise God for it. If it wasn't so good, Forget it. It's a new time. It's a new season. Amen. God's the author of new things. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? So just set your sights on what God is telling us that we can expect 
this year if we'll follow his instructions. So notice it is obvious throughout the word of God, and I've just given you a couple of references here, that God is interested in you and I progressing. It's never his will that we remain the same in any area of our lives. Certainly not remain the same spiritually. Certainly not remain the same physically. Certainly not remain the same soulishly. Certainly not remain the same financially. Amen. I was uh, uh, able to bless someone here recently that was in a, uh, a need that uh, uh, was pretty crucial to them. Was sharing uh, about it with me. And uh, I said, well, you know, I can take care of that. And it was a pretty large need. I said, I can take care of that for you. I believe in him. I trust him. Uh, he's a, a wonderful man of God. I said, I, I, I can take care of that for you. I said, just come by the office and we'll have a check ready for you. And I remember when he called me and thanked me, he says, someday I'm going to be able to do that. Amen. Well, I remember, <laughs> I remember back when I first started, you know, and, and uh, you know, $1,000 was a great sum of money when you don't have a job as such, don't have a, a guaranteed income, and you need $1,000 in your ministry just to keep the doors open. That's a large amount. And in the natural, you don't have it, and you don't know where you're going to get it, and you don't con people, and you don't stand in front of people and say, uh, I need a thousand dollars. Is God talking to you? <laughs> I never did that and I never will. Amen. And then somebody called and say, uh, Jerry, the Lord impressed upon me uh, that you need a thousand dollars. Can I come over and bring it to you? I said, you have heard from God. <laughs> and then my thought was, boy, someday yeah. I'm going to be able to do that. Yeah. Someday when somebody calls me and they're in need, I'll be able to meet yes. that need. Amen. 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 That's progression. Yes. That's advancing. Amen. That's promotion, praise God. Now, here's a key. Here's a real important key that a lot of Christians haven't learned. If you're faithful in little, I'll make you ruler over much. You have to show God that you can be faithful in little. Amen. Amen. I remember back there, 1969, and when I surrendered my life to the Lord, and uh, I wrote Brother Copeland a letter. I don't know if he still has it in his archives or not, but I wrote him a letter. And, that, and of course, he'd only been in the ministry two years at that time himself. And yet, but his faith, of course, I'm just starting. I just got born again. So his faith was certainly at a higher level than mine. And I wrote him a letter. I'm still living in Shreveport, Louisiana. I said, dear brother Copeland, I just want you to know the message you brought in that meeting in Shreveport at Life Tabernacle uh, changed my life. And if I had a thousand dollars I would put it into your ministry right now so you could reach other Jerry Savells like me who need this message. I said, but I don't have a thousand. I don't have a hundred. I don't even have 10 to send you. But I'm not without seed. Now, that's, the Lord said that to me that morning. I said, Lord, I, I want to sow into Brother Copeland's ministry, but I don't have any seed. He said, yes, you do. I said, well, if I do, I don't know where it is. <laughs> he said, prayer. He said, tell him in that letter, you'll get up every morning at six o'clock and spend the first hour of your day praying for him and his family and his ministry. I said, that's all the seed I have, Brother Copley. And I signed it, Jerry Savelle. Are life's demands distracting you from your true potential? It's time to filter out the noise and live with clear determination. 
When you order today's exclusive offer, the Power of Focus special package, you'll receive Jerry's inspiring book, Thoughts, The Battle Between Your Ears, and his eye-opening three-part audio series, What It Takes to Stay Focused. In this package, you'll discover how to control negative thoughts, the link between thoughts and actions, secrets to living by divine precision, and steps to align your focus with God's plan. Seize this opportunity to refocus your life and begin living with a clear and dedicated vision. Act quickly. Call or go online now to jerrysavelle.org and request your copy of the Power of Focus special package. Your journey to a life of divine clarity and purpose starts now. Embrace the power of focus today. It's been a joy sharing with you these principles that I've learned over the years about how to stay focused. Focus is so important. Let me remind you of the scripture in Hebrews chapter 6. It says that we're to follow those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. The message translation says it like this. Be like those who stay the course and then experience everything that God has promised them. And how do you stay the course? By remaining focused. Focused on what God has said focused on what he's promised and refuse to allow anything that is happening in the world to distract you. So that's so important. And I hope that you have uh, learned some valuable principles as you've watched these broadcasts. If you want to continue this study, we have three CDs on what it takes to stay focused, powerful information, biblical principles. And I know that you will be inspired by them as you listen to them. And then my little book that I wrote a number of years ago, Thoughts, The Battle Between Your Ears. The greatest battles you will ever fight is right between your ears, in your mind. The thoughts that come that don't line up with God's Word. And the Bible says when that happens, you must cast them down. They become strongholds. So you must cast them down. They're designed by Satan to rob you of God's best. So please order these resources as soon as possible. And I want you to go to jerrysavelle.org. All the information is there. Or you can look on the screen and all that ordering information is present there right now. Place your order very quickly. And I encourage you to listen to them and read this little book so that you will learn how to stay focused and then experience God's best for your life. Once again, thank you for joining with me. We look forward to sharing with you again on our next broadcast. Before we close today, let me just tell you the most important decision I've ever made in my life is inviting Jesus to come into my heart. If you've never done that, it's easy. Just say, Jesus, I believe in you. Come into my heart. Be my Lord, be my Savior. And when you do that, go to our website, jerrysavelle.org, and download this little book, You're Somebody Special to God. It will help teach and train you how to begin to enjoy the abundant life that God has provided for you. Do it right now.